So I just recently started riding my bike to work and I've been looking for this thing. You guys may have seen it before, uh, a belt holster for my phone. Been having a hard time finding one in any store. So I've been to T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, everywhere you can think of. And I just can't find one. So, as I stated, I've been looking for this thing known as a belt holster. Um, so I went to Best Buy the other day and uh, I asked this girl, like, I'm looking for a belt holster and she started laughing at me. Now, she basically laughed at me like nobody uses those things. But I got news for you, Samantha. My mom let me borrow one. So, yeah, it's not mine, but I'm still on a hunt. I'm going to find one. I ordered one in the mail. Just waiting for it to get here from China, which could take a few days. Anyway, I'm still riding. I'm still safe. Okay, so long story short, I went through all of this to try to find a holster of my own, which I couldn't find. So, like I said, I was able to borrow one from my mom, but this just gives me an opportunity to talk to you guys about some technology that uh, I'm a little depressed that we've lost over the years. Uh, the first being this belt holster. Like, seriously, I don't understand how something so practical is basically completely obsolete where I'm only able to find them in like China at this point. So let me, let me, let me just explain to you guys why it's such a practical device. So as I stated, I recently started riding my bike to the train. Now, when I ride a bike, I don't want to have to keep my phone in my pocket. So for me, having it on my belt, out of the way, I can still plug my headphones in, I can still have the full range of motion on my bicycle, um, to me it just makes practical sense. So I don't understand why nowadays they're not able to be found pretty much anywhere. I've gone into stores where people laughed at me, my wife said I look like a nerd with this thing on my hip, but to me it's just so practical. So with that being said, I'm gonna tell you guys some technology that I miss and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you out there that also may miss this technology as well. So the very first item on my list is the Motorola 2 Way Pager. <sighs> so for some of you people, these items that I'm listing, you may not have even heard of if you're under the age of like 30, 25-ish, I don't know. Uh, but the Motorola two-way pager, at the time, when it was first launched, it was in every music video you can think of. Uh, all the cool kids had one. So basically what the Motorola pager was, was it was the small device about this big, uh, where you could flip it up and you can send messages to people. It was a full-size si full QWERTY keyboard, um, but it fit in a little clip on your belt. So if you guys couldn't tell, I really want something on my belt. I don't understand how... Oh, okay, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. But yeah, Motorola two-way pages was the number one item that I wish that my parents would get me, but no matter how many times I begged, they said no. Plus, I didn't have any friends back then, so, um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Long story short, I really wanted a Motorola two-way pager. I remember when it first came out, they had, uh, there was a silver one and a black one that was bigger, it was about this big, and then they launched the coolest device. Um, I don't remember ex the exact model number, but it was a little bit smaller. Still had that flip style cover where you can text, but it came in these really nice colors. One was teal, they had red, and then to me, the absolute coolest one was they had like this bluish, um, it was like kind of navy-ish, in between navy and royal blue. It was the coolest device ever. I wanted one so bad. I remember all the cool kids would be sitting in the back of the room texting, and I'm sitting there looking, still writing on paper. Do you like me? Circle yes or no. Moving directly on from that device was, to me, the most important piece of technology that this world has ever seen. I might be exaggerating. It was PDAs. So, what was cool about the texting feature of that is that you had the full-size QWERTY keyboard, you were able to send short SMS uh, messages back and forth to people, but once they released personal 
computing devices, PDAs. You had the power of Windows, full computers in your palm. So one of the devices that obviously everyone has heard of it, it made the most sense to have this name was the Palm Trio. Now, for those of you who had a Palm Trio, you know, like I know, it was the coolest thing to own at that time. You actually felt like a professional. You could send email, you can search the web, it had Internet Explorer. I mean, it was a stripped down version of it, but it had Internet Explorer. It had a stylus on it. Not only did it have a stylus, but it again had that full size QWERTY keyboard. Again, it was another piece of technology that I wish I had. I have a brother who's a year older than me. He was lucky enough to have one because uh, he bought one with his own money. I was I was broke. I couldn't get one. But he had that. I wanted one so bad. But unfortunately, my mom wasn't one of those moms that just bought you anything just because you wanted it. You had to earn it or, in my brother's case, buy it. So I instead purchased the next device, which I really, really 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 miss with a passion and i know a lot of you high school kids well you you wouldn't be in high school anymore was the sidekick i had the sidekick one i had the sidekick two and then i had the sidekick three now for me the reason why the sidekick was the perfect device for someone like me is because i again had that full-size qwerty keyboard um the screen did this little shh, shh, noise it was the coolest thing to have at the time all the rappers rapped about it. They had celebrity endorsements. Uh, Snoop Dogg did a commercial for it. Paris Hilton made it famous. Um, but what was different about this was this wasn't so focused on email. It wasn't email centric like the Palm Trio was. We still had a browser which sucked. But what was great about this was that it didn't just do SMS. It did instant messaging. So we had AOL instant messaging on there. We had Yahoo Messenger on there. By the time I got to the third edition, it had Google Messenger, which at that time was called like Gchat. Um, that was on there. It was great. It did picture messaging, which was completely different than all the other ones because you actually were able to send pictures via MMS, which is multimedia messaging. Um, so we were able to send MMS back and forth uh, and you were able to enter chat rooms on your phone, in your palm. So the sidekick was a little bit larger. It was about this big as opposed to the Palm Trio, which was about this big. Uh, it didn't have a stylus. It didn't have a touch screen. So that uh, Palm Pilot, um, the Palm Trio, which was modeled after the Palm Pilot, had a touch screen that you can use the stylus on. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, and that was a big difference. But the Palm Trio was more geared towards like business professionals, whereas, like I said, the sidekick was more for like high school students. Um, and it was great. It was great. So moving right along, after the Palm Pilot, after the Sidekick era, was the BlackBerry era. Everybody in their mama had a BlackBerry, including mine. Uh, so as I got a little older, I started getting a little more, I don't want to say business centric because I was a waiter. I didn't have any business. But I moved on from those childish devices such as the Sidekick and I upgraded to the Motorola Q, which at the time it was a great phone with ter absolutely terrible battery life. But when I had that device, my mom had purchased a Sidekick. Uh, sorry, not a Sidekick. My mom had purchased a Blackberry, Blackberry, and she put me on to Blackberry. And it changed my life. You can get three days full battery life on a Blackberry charge, one single Blackberry charge. Uh, but we had, again, the same, in it basically combined everything that I had on all my other devices. All those other PDAs I had before that, all those other uh, personal computing devices that I had before that. It combined all of that. So I got my chat, I got my AOL instant messaging, but I also got BlackBerry Messenger, which anyone who has had a BlackBerry, you know how absolutely important BlackBerry Messenger was. <sighs> BlackBerry, life-changing device. Uh, as I got a little older, I started getting more into email and sending pictures and music via email. So it made more sense. It was like an evolutionary change for me. Um, and it was it was great. And then it wasn't. Great. It died off. BlackBerry died off. Making way for touchscreen devices, as you all know and love today, um, which 
Everyone is using a touchscreen device now. iPhone is pretty much taking over. Android is pretty much taking over. I was one of those people that was holding on to BlackBerry for dear life. I just refused to give up my BlackBerry until everyone had moved on from BBM and it kind of made no sense to have a BlackBerry with this little 2.5 inch screen while everyone else had a nice 3.5 inch full touchscreen with YouTube installed where you can watch actual video. So it just kind of made sense to move on. <sighs> Last and final device that I'm going to talk about, guys, is the iPad. <sighs> it ain't dead yet, but it's kind of on its way out, and that's tablets. Guys, I absolutely love tablets. I've had every iteration of the iPad starting from the iPad 2. I didn't have the iPad 1. Starting from the iPad 2, because when the iPad 1 came out, I was still rocking my netbook, thinking I was kind of hot. I thought I was kind of hot with that netbook. I got the iPad 2, and in, in the industry that I work in, I train. Um, not personal training, if you saw my belly, you know I'm definitely no personal trainer. But I train medical software, and in that, I've always used an iPad to have my notes, uh, my class documents, and thing like things like that. Uh, then when I went to school, I was still using that iPad. Um, and then as I got into my professional career, I still utilized the iPad for other things like involving work related stuff. Um, and I've had every iteration. It wasn't until the iPad Pro came out that I have decided that this is the absolute most perfectest vice <laughs> device I've ever had. Um, so let me just get my accessories. So I tend to take my iPad pretty much everywhere I go um, because I have a lot of documents on it. I do a lot with it. I connect to my phone with it and it runs like a full computer. Now, for those of you who say you can't do everything on an iPad, I could do pretty much everything on an iPad, everything that I do on a daily basis. I have my full internet on here. I have full browsing privileges on here. Um, for those things that I can't do, such as utilizing uh, Excel and things like that, I have uh, Google uh, Drive on here, which connects with Google Docs. So with that, I can do pretty much everything. This is like literally the mobile office. I not only have the iPad Pro, but I have the keyboard, which as you know, if you've seen any commercials, the iPad Pro does have this origami style keyboard that I could basically attach here. And it is absolute best device um, I think I've ever owned. I do everything on that device, everything on that device. Not only do I have the iPad Pro with the keyboard, I also went and got the Apple Pencil, which I don't really use that much, but I got it dirt cheap. I'm lying. It wasn't dirt cheap. I got it on some sale. Um, but these are just things that I miss, things that I, I, I just don't want the iPad to ever go out of style because I love it. Um, but the iPad is basically taking a back seat to these big screen phones now. Now you can get a phone with, you know, 5.5 inch screen, 5.7. The latest one is a 6.2 inch screen. These are pieces of technology that I miss, guys. And I, I, I it just fascinates me how fast technology is moving so i know that goes way off of what we were talking about earlier with these little holsters but i, I don't understand why technology has to move so fast i'm all for technology but it's moving so fast things are changing so quick and something as simple as a freaking belt holster i can't find anywhere except china guys thank you for tuning in i know this was kind of like a really stupid video but I'm a tech buff. I love technology and I'm always on the latest cutting edge of technology. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. If you like, subscribe, feel free. Um, yeah. Bye.